So before going on to the other methods, I'm going to go ahead and implement the clear method and then the destructor. And part of the reason I'm doing it in this order is because we already have code for the clear method. This came right out of that main function where we were demonstrating how to deallocate our linked list. And really this is the implementation of the clear method. Then I'm going to have the destructor call the clear method. And in doing so, because clear is public, a programmer who needs to remove the elements of the list can use it. Generally, you can't call a destructor um, from a program yourself. It gets called when uh, execution leaves the scope in which an object was declared. Now, the names are going to change here. Instead of using node pointer, um, I'm going to use head pointer. It's going to be the uh, private data member of the class. And then I'm going to have to actually declare uh, temp pointer myself. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is the implementation that I need. So if we start off with our declaration for the clear method, list of ints, whoops, then all it's going to do is it is going to start at the beginning of the list and I'll just go ahead and use temp pointer again and keep in mind what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my list of ints here and I'm going to have my head pointer and that's going to be a pointer to some number of nodes. And I know that I've reached the end of the linked list because the last node in the list has a next pointer that points to null. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make temp pointer point to the first element of the list. I'm going to store head pointer's address in temp pointer. And keep in mind the head pointer here is referring to the private data member in the list of integers. So now as long as and I'm going to be using, uh, remember that there's an order of operations here. I can't call delete because if I do, then I delete that node and I can't get to the rest of the list. So I'm going to use temp pointer for my traversal. And so as long as temp pointer is not equal to null, then I want to continue to iterate. I need to advance temp pointer to the next node in the list so that I can get access to the rest of the list. And I do that by saying that temp pointer is equal to temp pointer. Whoops. Should be capital. Get next pointer. So that's going to advance temp pointer to the next node in the chain. And now that I've saved the rest of the list, I can delete the node that head pointer points to. And I just say delete head pointer. So that deletes this element. And then to make sure that I'm in exactly the same configuration as before, I have to make head pointer point to temp pointer, and I can do that just like that. And that's the end of the while loop. And that's also the end of my clear method. Now, an important point here with this clear method is look w at what happens when I finally get to the end here. Keep in mind that when the this clear method terminates we want to take this list back to a default constructed state. That's what we want. This is what we want our list of ints object to look like after we have cleared it. And so one question would be do I need to explicitly assign head pointer to null when this while loop terminates. 
and it turns out I don't. What is going to happen upon termination is list pointer will point to null, and that happens right here in this assignment. This is where temp pointer becomes null. Then I'll delete head pointer, which is the last node in the list. Then I assign temp pointer to head pointer, which makes head pointer point to null. Then when the while loop terminates, well, then the while loop terminates because temp pointer points to null. So one of the post conditions of this loop is that when it terminates, both temp pointer and head pointer will point to null. Now when clear terminates, temp pointer will be deallocated because it's local, uh, but head pointer will persist because it's a, a class private data member, and it points to null. And this is exactly what we want to have happen when clear terminates. So now that I have implemented a method that removes all the elements of the list, now I can turn my attention to the destructor. The destructor is going to do an, exactly the same thing. And in fact, if we weren't implementing a, a clear method, we would just put all of this code in the destructor itself, but we don't want to duplicate code, of course. So since I've implemented a clear method, I can just have the destructor call it. So you, you implement a destructor. We saw this implementation in time, but just to remind you that you start with the class name, the scoping operator, and then the name of the method, and the name of a destructor is the name of the class preceded by the tilde. So. And all we need to do is just call clear. Just like that. So when we leave the scope, if we've, you know, if we're in some block and we create some list of ints, L O I, and you know, we are building our list, we're using our list, we're printing our list, and when we get to the end of this block, let's say that it has elements in it. I mean, there's no guarantee that. Uh, by the time we get to the end of this block that, that no elements are in this list. There could be, there could be none. There could be 25 or 10,000 nodes to this list. Well, at this point, the destructor, as you know, when we leave the scope of this block, the runtime environment automatically calls this destructor. The destructor calls the clear method. And as you know, the clear method traverses this list and deletes every node. And what you can do is type this in, run valgrind, and it will show you that we deallocated all of the nodes of the list.